Hey, how's it going? Scott here. I just thought I'd make another quick fundamentals video. It's Saturday morning. <clears throat> I'm barely uh, awake, but I've had this on my mind for a little while and I thought I'd uh, shoot a little video about it. So in this quick tip video, I would like to just discuss holding parts while painting and another fundamental thing for you guys that maybe you haven't seen this or you've seen some people doing this and wondering what exactly are they doing. It's very basic. So we're going to build we're going to build something. What I tend to use are some uh, little craft store needle nose pliers. I've also got a pair of these cutters. These are not sprue cutters, okay? Don't use your sprue cutters for this. You don't want to wreck them. But these are more for, uh, what are they, wire cutters? I've had those for years. Used to use them to change guitar strings and stuff. They're handy. Some tape will work. Double sided tape is good too. You're going to need some alligator clips. Now you guys know where I'm going with this. Alligator clips, okay? You can get these just about anywhere online. I got these at Princess Audio, Auto, Princess Auto. Um, couple bucks for six. And at the dollar store again, some skewers, bamboo skewers for like um, shish kebabs and stuff. And basically the idea is that you can hold your part on an alligator clip that's in a skewer. It's not rocket science, but if you don't know, you don't know. So here's an alligator clip. This, I'm not going to open up the new pack, but here's one that I've had for a while, okay? I'm going to just take a skewer. Now, you just stick this on the end. You can kind of work it past the spring, and it's pretty firm on there. I like to take it one step further. I take these needle nose pliers and I crimp the end. Okay, just a bit. So now it's really solid on there and then you end up with something to hold apart. Ow! Um, right? Simple. Uh, let me find a model kit part that I can hold up. Okay, so here's a seat from a 32 Ford. You can just pinch it there and hold it. Okay, now the problem with this is number one, this thing has teeth on it and there's a chance that it might mar your plastic. Number two is that you're not going to get paint on the part where it's being held. What I do sometimes is just take a piece of uh, sprue or anything and CA it somewhere on the part where it's inconspicuous. Let me show you something here. When I was painting the body on this Ford, you see that sprue there? Okay. Now, I just CA'd that there and then it gives me a place to attach this to. That's a bit heavy now because the interior's inside, but before that, it's really light. Okay? You can just hold that in place. Now, while things are drying, I like to use a piece of 2 inch high density foam. This is the stuff they use for insulation, right? 2 inch high density foam. And uh, I bought a sheet of this and I have a table saw, so I rip it into pieces on a table saw. This is also good for bases and diorama, but that's another subject altogether. The beauty about these, you can get them like from job sites. It doesn't have to be two inch, it's just nice and thick so you can get a good grab in there. You can get inch or inch and a half, but if you can get the two inch stuff, I find that works best. And with these, obviously, you can just plant your skewer into it and it holds apart. Now the thing is, with this, it's pretty tall. So what I do with these is I take my skewer and I vary the heights of them, not cutting the pointy part, but I cut the square part. Okay, now I got a short skewer and I can take one of my alligator clips and where's my things? And then I can pinch this on the end and now you get a short skewer, right? And it's easy as that and it works great. Some people take a piece of wood and drill holes in it and what not to hold these up. I just use this, it's just, you just stick it in there. The beauty about this too is that if you get something small, say like, a, I don't know, for sci-fi I'd put guns on here. You know, anything that's cylindrical, you can just get a toothpick to hold it and your toothpick can go in there too. And if you have to build up the diameter of your toothpick, just use a little bit of tape and build up the diameter of your toothpick so that it'll hold whatever cylindrical object you're trying to hold on to, right? Whether it's an exhaust on a car, guns on a spaceship, uh, 
barrels on a tank, you know, anything at all. And then you can also use popsicle sticks or stir sticks. What I first like to do with these, because that really doesn't want to stick into the foam, I take these cutters here and give this a give this a point. You get my point? Okay, maybe not. Wow, hands of steel. Cool. Always wear your safety glasses. So I get a point on there. Now this will go in there no problem. And then if you can use double-sided tape, I usually just tape, take painter's tape. I tape it on normal, give it a twirl, give it a flip, and then around and around and around and around and around you go. And there you get double-sided tape and it's stuck on the stick. And you can do that for this too, just as easily. Since I'm doing it, I might as well do it because I'm going to paint some stuff. So I just, I do it this way. I stick it on and then I just give it a flip. Instead of just trying to wrap it on itself, then it just comes off because it's not really stuck to the stick. And you can, you know, depending on what you're painting, sometimes you want to have, I don't know if you're going to spray paint or airbrush a fog, you want to have a longer handle, but Alright, so that holds parts, and it really holds parts well, like, you know, you can imagine sticking stuff on there. So that's my quick little fundamentals for today, and I hope you get something out of this. If you didn't know about it, now you do, and you got me to blame. Alright, thanks, God bless, and we'll see you next time in another video of some sort. See ya.